As per reports, Indian pharmaceutical sector is ranked third largest sector in the world in terms of volume with a market size of $44 billion in FY21. And India is the world's largest provider of genetic medicine by volume with a 20% share of total global pharmaceutical exports. On top of that, in the recent Union Budget 2022, Government of India recognized pharmaceutical industry as a sunrise sector of the economy which is expected to register a threefold growth in the next decade. Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Pursa Finance Academy. Pharma sector in India has a bright growth prospect and today we are going to cover the fundamental analysis of one of the leading generic API manufacturers of the world. As per reports, there is a huge opportunity where $20 billion worth APIs are going off patent over the period of FY23 to 25. And the company that we are going to discuss today has planned a capex of 2000 crore rupees to capture a chunk of this opportunity. Can you guess the name of the company? Well, it is Divis Lab. Over the last few years, Divis Lab has emerged as an undisputed leader in the Indian generic API market and has been a wealth compounder for years. However, in recent sell off, Divis Lab share price has fallen 30% from its peak. So I thought of covering Divis Lab fundamentals and help you understand its business, key strength, leadership, future growth prospect, key risk, along with financials. But before we proceed, let me be very clear that this is not a stock tip. I never provide stock tips. If you are looking for tips, I'm sure there are a lot of channels out there. Also, my videos are not for traders looking for short term profits. My videos are only helpful for long term investors who want to identify potential business in the country where they can consider investing for long term wealth creation. And I have observed that since the stock market has fallen, there are a lot of negative comments from people questioning my analysis skill. So all I want to say is, yes, I can also go wrong in stock picks, but do not make a judgment about my skill only on the basis of last six to eight months of returns. That too, especially when the markets are down. I try to focus on business and fundamentals because I know that if a business is fundamentally strong, then it will eventually jump. One of the classic example is ITC. It underperformed for almost five years and became the popular meme stock. But look at where it is today. Year to date, when Nifty is down 10%, ITC is up more than 30%. So it's my request, don't just look at stock returns in past few months to decide if a stock is good or bad. And I would repeat, my videos are only for long-term fundamental investors to understand more about the business of the company. They are not stock tips. At the end of the day, you should do thorough research before investing your money. All right, let's get started. Established in the year 1990, Divis is a leading manufacturer of active pharmaceutical ingredients, that is API, offering high quality products to over 95 countries. Divis manufactures generic APIs, nutraceutical ingredients, and offers custom synthesis of APIs to big pharma giants. Let us try to understand the business of Divis Lab in detail. So the first business of Divis Lab is manufacturing of generic APIs. Now what is generic API? So API is basically your active pharmaceutical ingredient which is a key chemical substance for any medicine. And generic API means APIs for generic drugs that are allowed for sale after the patents on the original drugs has expired. So basically when a company patent a drug the patent is granted for a specific time frame and after that it becomes generic and anyone can manufacture that drug. And Divis Lab is the global leader in generic API manufacturing. It manufactures around 30 APIs and out of that Divis is world's largest manufacturer of 10 APIs. In fact, Divis is among the top two API manufacturer in the world for 18 out of 30 molecules. Now that shows the scale of Divis Lab. Over the years, Divis Lab has this leadership position because of various factors such as backward integration to basic starting material, then dedicated production blocks with large batch sizes and significant capacity creation ahead of its time. Now second business of Divis Lab is custom synthesis of APIs to big pharma giants. So Divis is engaged in custom synthesis that is contract manufacturing services of APIs and intermediates for global pharma companies with a vast portfolio of products across diverse therapeutic areas. In fact, Divis Lab has established relationship with six out of top 10 big pharma companies and 12 out of top 20 big pharma companies across US, Europe and Japan are associated with Divis for more than 10 years. That shows the confidence of world's top pharma giants in Divis Lab. Third business division of Divis Lab include nutraceutical ingredients. 
Now, what are nutraceutical ingredients? So, nutraceutical is a broad umbrella term that is used to describe any product derived from food sources with extra health benefits in addition to the basic nutritional value found in food. So, there are a lot of food items that are fortified with additional benefits like your vitamin, minerals, etc. Divis Lab is one of world's leading producer of carotenoids. Carotenoids are plant pigment responsible for bright red, yellow and orange color in many fruits and vegetables like your carrot, papaya, orange, spinach, tomato, etc. Carotenoids also act as antioxidants in the human body. They have strong cancer fighting properties and some carotenoids are converted by the body to vitamin A which is essential to vision and normal growth and development. Carotenoids also have anti-inflammatory and immune system benefits and are sometimes associated with cardiovascular disease prevention. So I hope now you understand the business of Divis Lab. Now if you look at the revenue mix of Divis Lab, the largest contribution is from generic API that contributes 49% in total revenue. It is followed with contract manufacturing with 41% contribution and nutraceutical business contributes 10%. If you look at the geography mix, Europe contributes 46.7%, US contributes 23.3%, India contributes 13.4%, Asia contributes 12.2% and remaining 4.4% is from rest of the world. Lewis Lab has 6 manufacturing units and 3 R&D centers spread across the states of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. It has a portfolio of 130 products across diverse therapeutic areas. As on March 31, 2021, Lewis Lab has a total of 39 drug master files with US FDA and 24 CEPs that is certificates of suitability issued by EDQM authorities. It has filed for a total of 40 patents for genetic drugs. Currently, Divis Lab has a market cap of around 1 lakh crore rupees. Now let us look at the promoter details. If you look at the promoter details, Mr. Mulli K. Divi is the founder and MD of the company. The name Divis Lab has come from his surname. He is a postgraduate in pharmaceutical chemistry from College of Pharmacy, Manipal. Dr. Divi has over 30 years of experience in the bulk pharmaceutical industry. Prior to venturing Divis Lab, Dr. Divi has worked with Trinity Chemical Corporation US, Squilkill Chemical US and Phi Chemicals as Technical Director and Vice President of R&D. So he has a rich experience in pharma industry. If you look at the future growth prospect, in the short term, there could be slight fall in growth due to economy normalizing post-COVID effect because during COVID the need for medicine shoot up and that resulted in sharp jump in profits and margin for pharma companies. But now that situation has normalized, the near-term growth might not be that quick. However, the long-term growth prospects are intact. The Indian pharmaceutical industry is globally ranked third in terms of volume and 13th in terms of value. The size of industry is estimated at about $44 billion in FR21 with domestic and export segment each holding a share of around 50% in industry's revenue. Now growth of the domestic pharma market is expected to be driven by increase in penetration of health insurance, improving access to healthcare facility, rising prevalence of chronic disease and rising per capita income. So all these factors would result in high demand for pharma sector in domestic market. Then export growth is expected to be led by increasing genetic penetration in the regulated market patent expiries, medicine patent pool announcing licensing agreement with pharmaceutical companies and growing demand from semi-regulated pharma market. Furthermore, supply constraint from China, which is the largest producer of key starting material that is KSM, an active pharmaceutical ingredient and diversification effort from global pharma companies with China plus one strategy has created new growth opportunity for Indian manufacturer. To capitalize on this opportunity, Government of India has announced initiatives like development of three bulk drug parks worth 3,000 crore and production link incentive scheme worth 6,940 crore for promotion of domestic manufacturing of KSM and APIs in the country. With growing demand from global and domestic market supported by expanding manufacturing capabilities and policy initiative, growth prospect of Indian pharmaceutical industry remain healthy and Divis has planned an aggressive capex of around 2,000 crore over the next two years in order to take a chunk of this $20 billion opportunity of APIs going off patent over FI 23 to 25. So overall, the growth prospects in the long term are looking very bright. If you look at the key risk, first risk is high working capital cycle. 
Divislav working capital cycle has remained elongated and stood at 204 days during FR21 as against 222 days during FR20. The working capital cycle is long primarily on account of high inventory and collection periods. The company undertakes campaign production of large volume products by running the plant at full stream. The company then stock these products thus freeing the multipurpose plant for producing other products. Hence the company in general has a trend of high inventory holding period. The collection period is high since the company needs to allow credit period as per industry norms and to maintain client relationship. Then second risk is exposure to regulatory risk. The pharma industry is highly regulated and requires various approvals, licenses, registration and permission for business activities. Each authority has its own requirement and they could delay or refuse to grant approval even when a product has already been approved in another country. The approval process for a new product registration is complex, lengthy and expensive. The time taken to obtain approval varies as per the country, however it generally takes 6 months to several years from the date of application. Any delay or failure in getting approval for new product launch could adversely affect the business prospect of the company. Given India's significant share in the US genetic market, the US FDA has increased its scrutiny of manufacturing facility and other regulatory compliance of the Indian pharma companies supplying APIs and generic drugs to the US. Non-compliance may result in regulatory ban on products and facilities and may impact the company's future approval from US FDA. So regulatory risk is a part of pharma sector companies. Now as far as competitors are concerned, Divis faces stiff competition from companies like Sun Pharma, Torrent Pharma, Cadilla, Aurobindo Pharma, Abbott Lab, etc. Now let us look at financials of Divis Lab. If you look at the revenues of Divis Lab, it has grown from 4064 crore in March 17 to 8960 crore by March 22 and it has been a consistent growth in the revenues of the company and the CGI growth has been 17.13% which has been pretty good. And if you look at the profit growth, profits have grown from 1060 crore in March 17 to 2960 crore by March 22 and the CGI growth has been 22.8% which is very good. And if you look at the margins, look at this, operating margins of Divisk Lab has been on the higher side consistently. It was 36%, 33% and even the recent margins are even higher. 41% and 43%. Next, if you look at the ROE and ROC, again it has been consistently about 20% on year-on-year -year basis. So it was the ROCE was 25.9, then 20, then 26. And in last three years, if you see, it was 24.8, 28.7, and then latest is 31.4. Likewise, ROE is 19.8, 14.8, 19.4, and the latest is 25.2. So it has got a very good profitability. Next, if you look at the debt to equity, look at this, it has been consistently zero. So, company is completely debt free. And if you look at the reserves, look at this consistent increase in the reserves. Reserves were 5,304 crore in March 17 and today it is 11,675 crore. So, overall, the financials are looking very solid. Now, let us look at the shareholding pattern of Divis Lab. So, if you look at the promoter holding, in September 19, promoter were holding 52.07% holding and since last 12 quarters, Promoter holding has been sort of consistent in the company and the latest holding stood at 51.94%. If you look at FIS holding, it was 19.6% in September 19 and uh, it jumped to as high as 20.6% but in fact 20.7% but since then it has slightly reduced so latest holding of FIS stood at 16.52%. If you look at DIS holding, uh, it was 15.46% in September 19 and then in last few quarters, if you see, DIs are actually increasing their investment. So it was 13.36, uh, then increased to 17.7, then 18.3, and latest shareholding is 19.98. So that shows the confidence of domestic institutional investors in Divis Lab. Now let us look at the share price movement of Divis Lab. So currently, Divis Lab is trading at levels of 3715, and uh, if you look at uh, year to date movement, the share price is down 20% in last one year if you see it touched a high of 5400 and since then it has fallen quite a lot. So it fell down as, as low as 35.8% but since then there is some recovery. However still at current levels it is trading almost 30% down from its peak. And if you look at 5 year movement look at this. It was a consistent increase in the share price of the company and especially during COVID the share price jumped quite a lot. 
Now the reason for correction in the share price is mainly because because of COVID there was a sharp growth in companies earning and there are expectations that now COVID has uh, you know economy has recovered so it might happen that Divis Lab in the near term might not grow as quickly as it has grown in the past but that doesn't mean that Divis Lab is fundamentally weak. The near term growth prospect in the in terms of uh, share price movement might be not that good but long term growth prospect are looking pretty good and if you look at the valuation currently it is trading at levels of 33.3 so for a company like Divis Lab that has got a very bright growth prospect a valuation of 33 look pretty decent although if there is any further correction in the company it would be worth adding so basically it's better to add this company in a systematic manner to utilize this current downfall in the share market so in this video we discuss the fundamentals of Divis Lab it is among the world's leading manufacturer of generic API as well as contract manufacturer of APIs for Big Pharma giant. Fundamentally, Divis Lab is super strong with an established track record of more than 30 years, long lasting relationship with top pharma giants, then leadership in API manufacturing and strong leadership. Finally, Divis Lab is super strong with high profitability, high growth and zero debt. As far as future growth is concerned, the future of Indian pharma sector is very bright on account of themes like China plus one, as well as Indian government focus on reducing the dependence from China with PLI scheme. There's a $20 billion opportunity of APIs going off patent over FR23 to 25, and that would immensely benefit generic API leaders like Divis Lab. Company has already planned a capex of 2000 crore rupees over the next two years to capture the growing opportunity. Currently, Divis Lab is trading at levels of 3,800 with a P ratio of 34, and that looks decent. So, Divis Lab is one stock that can be a part of your portfolio, and you can consider accumulating this stock in a systematic manner. So, this is it for this video. I hope you'll find it useful. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.